of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The River Jordan, or Jordan River, flows roughly north to south for 156 miles through the Sea of Galilee and on to the Dead Sea. In addition to Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, the Bible tells how the ancient Israelites crossed this famous landmark and river into the Promised Land. The shortest distance from Jerusalem to the Jordan River is 21 miles. While we have no way of knowing exactly, for at least 1,500 years, Christians have been making pilgrimages to a site called Almagdus, believed by many to be the site where John the Baptist baptized Jesus and so many others. In 2015, UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization des designated this as a World Heritage Site. At the time of Jesus, people traveled by foot. So for people to walk from Jerusalem to be baptized by John would have been at least a 42-mile round-trip journey through very rugged terrain. It wasn't for the faint of heart to travel that distance, and yet many made the trek only to hear themselves dress, addressed as, you brood of vipers. Brood of vipers literally means children of snakes. Snakes in, in antiquity were considered poisonous, and John's expression is intended to convey the repulsive, even destructive character of those so described. John is warning them against any smugness of certain salvation by being children of Abraham. Just as snakes flee the approach of a brush fire, so the Jews are trying to escape the fire of judgment. John says that they should bear fruits worthy of repentance. In other words, let their behavior demonstrate that an inner revitalization has occurred. Scripture and rabbinic literature indicate that descendants of Abraham and Sarah will be spared God's wrath. John then warns, don't say that you have Abraham as your ancestor because the people of God will not be defined by biological descent, but by God's gift of the spirit and by faith. To have children of Abraham God does not depend on Jews being physically descended from the patriarch Abraham. John implies that God can create Israel anew. This prompts the people to ask, what then should we do? John says that what is called for is not extra sacrifices in the temple or wearing sackcloth and ashes. In early Judaism, Someone wanting to show a repentant heart would often wear sackcloth, sit in ashes, and put ashes on the top of his or her head. Sackcloth was a coarse material usually made of black goat's hair, making it quite uncomfortable to wear. The ashes signified emptiness, despair, and ruin. John is telling those who would listen that to show their repentance, they should share. If one has two coats, share with someone who has no coat. The same goes for those who have food. Share your food with those who have no food. Tax collectors who came to be baptized asked what they should do. John says, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. The way in which taxes were collected in Palestine was ripe for corruption. The Roman government would state what amount of taxes they expected from the collectors. Their payment as tax collectors came from, came from charging a small amount more than what was owed. Many tax collectors would extort the citizens by charging them far more than the prescribed amount in order to pad their pockets. John tells them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers ask John, and what should we do? 
John said, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. Soldiers in Jesus' day were in a position to see a great deal of human experience and were in a position to extort or blackmail people. Jews feared the Roman government and soldiers were in a position to inform on people with either true or false information about them. Because the Romans were occupiers of Jerusalem, what they said was taken as truth. There was little to no defense for the Jews. They would usually succumb to extortion and blackmail for self-protection or maybe even personal gain. The question of the crowd posed to John and his answers are also for us today. What then should we do? Just as Jews saw themselves as saved from the fire of judgment by being descendants, many Christians see themselves as saved from judgment by virtue of their baptism. I believe if John were here today and we were to ask, what then should we do? He would say, you must bear fruit. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Just as it was not enough to be the descendants of Abraham, being baptized into the body of Christ carries responsibilities. There is not a simple checklist of mechanical tasks that will do. Our lives must bear fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, we must experience a metanoia or noticeable change in our day-to-day -day life. The metanoia or turning from that which is leading us away from God and back to God comes from penitence and spiritual conversion. John tells us that physical manifestations of that change include sharing clothing and food with those in need. The fruits of repentance lead to the fruit of the Spirit, which we know to be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's an old saying that goes something like, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? John the Baptist in this third Sunday of Advent is reminding us that we need to look hard into the mirror and take stock of where our lives are falling short in bearing fruit worthy of repentance. Look around. We are so blessed in this parish to see evidence of bearing fruit all around. We have parishioners who are actively involved in the feeding the poor through the ministry of St. Francis Loaves and Fishes. Capital City Rescue Mission in Albany has benefited from the ministries of parishioners in volunteering their time, donations that allow feeding and housing more homeless people, and donations of clothing, shoes, linens, jewelry, and personal items that provide more for the clients of the mission. There are perpetually collection bins in our vestibule, and Carol McNaughton, as well as other volunteers, make regular trips to the Capital City Rescue Mission. At least once a month, Carol's car is filled with bags of clothing for those in need. You might notice in the narthex, the trees are again this year decorated with bags intended for gifts to the Healing a Woman's Soul Ministry, also known as Hawes. These bags will be blessed and distributed to representatives from Hawes this Wednesday during the 1215 service of Holy Eucharist with anointing for healing. Hawes is a ministry that supports women who have been victims of domestic abuse and is dedicated to fighting domestic violence. You may notice as you enter the vestibule that there's a collection container for eyeglasses. St. George's is partnering with International Accelerated Missions, which is a medical mission endeavor. They have been able to bring many pair of donated glasses to give away on their medical mission trips. This has allowed them to restore vision to hundreds of people. Eye care is rare in some countries, and a pair of glasses can literally change a life. St. George's regularly 
distributes food, contributes food to the Helping Hands food pantry, and in the height of COVID, was supporting the food pantry at Captain for those in our community who are food insecure and were unable to get products that were in short supply. These donations come from a list that is provided regularly of the highest needs, as well as from financial donations. We are supporting a ministry called Agam in Malawi that reaches out and helps the poorest of the poor, sharing a message of the love of Jesus and a message of hope that makes this life worth living. John was preaching a baptism of repentance. He was preparing the way of the Lord. He was telling people how to prepare for the arrival of the Messiah. We are halfway through the season of Advent, which is sometimes called the time of already and not yet. The Messiah, Jesus the Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, has come, but he will come again. This life we live in this current time is a journey of preparation. Use this time wisely to prepare your hearts to celebrate that God incarnate has come among us and will come again when we will all stand before the great judgment seat of the throne of God, when everything on earth and heaven will be reconciled in the all in all of God for eternity. Amen.